there, there is a famous photograph um, of Michael Collins as a young fella, very young fella. He's with, about, with the cap of 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, he's about 10 or 9 or 10 or 10. There's a, a boring story there because Collins as a young fella was down on the road by Woodfield near his home, bowling along the road with, with the other fellas. And his mother, uh, his mother, um, th that, that time, if we're, if we're taking a family uh, photograph, which was not cheap, by the way, to the only people that will, uh, would have the money to do it in the way at all, you would get a photographer to come out from the town. And this, the photographer came out from Clannacilty at very great expense. And, of course, the young boy was missing. So Collins's mother sent his sister down to get him up off the road. It was summer's evening. And when she... When she told him to um, to uh, come up, he told her to, no, okay, to uh, and she went back, uh, and she hadn't him coming back. So his mother came down, and she caught him by the ear, like that. She caught him by the ear, and she marched him up to the front of the house, uh, which was burdened later by the Essex Regiment, the famous dwelling house. And she stood him in the middle and told him to do what he was told, and he had a kind of a scowling look on his face as is famously depicted in the photograph because he was dragged away from the score. That's a famous um, one, you know, that has, again, that has to do with bowling. Another famous story about Michael Collins was that when the bishop, when the parish priest of Roscarbury, was he, Father O'Hare, yeah, yeah. when he condemned the um, 1916 rebellion he was home and off Holders. the altar. He was home in Holders. Yeah. Uh, Collins was home in Holders at the time, and uh, or was he internment? Was after, he? after Frank Cook, yeah. yeah. He, he was back from internment, and he attended a score in the pike, was it? Yeah, after yeah. Mass, like after yeah, Mass. Yeah, after Mass. And he jumped up on the ditch and gave a bit of a speech to the assembled crowd at the score, condemning outright Father O'Hare for condemning the volunteers for the 1916 rising. He was the same as many more like out there. He knew Collins was in the congregation. It was, he was home from for Easter after the, yeah. the, the internment there like out there. And his words were uh, off the fence like out there. Thing that, uh, I'd rather be in hell with Sean McDiarmid than be in heaven with that man. That were his words. Like. Yeah. Uh, he was a rebel. That was that's the way they went as regards you know the the the, the, the majority of the of the, the of the, the older clergy were completely, they were the, the home rulers, we call it, and all the rest of that. And, you know. In the Kilmory, being a blah area, be, during the First World War and before it, the RAC, they had a kind of a particular animosity towards bowling. There are several cases that we came across here of bowlers being arrested for, for being a danger to traffic. Now, what name of God was, was it? Problem with traffic. Then, but to, to be a danger to traffic and the passing public. And um, then, of course, when the DORA, the DORA, Defense, Defense of the Realm Act, came in in 19, I think it was a 16, 17, 17, 17, 17 uh, yeah. where uh, one of the, and then when martial law came in during the troubles, where groups were gathered together, that was suspected also as a subversive situation. A match now was different. A GA match would be slightly different, to be very obvious. But if you had a group of six or seven men gathered at a crossroads, or 10 men or 15 men all together, and the RIC man came on in a bicycle, he immediately suspected a subversive, subversive thing. So this vein was running through it all the time. And then, going back when, um, Kilmory um, uh, branch of the volunteers was set up in 1915. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Terence McSweeney, uh, the famous Terence McSweeney, came out to be in the law with, with the mascot to, to, to meet the local fellows at a score. There was a score going on to meet uh, the local people there to set up a branch of the volunteers in that area. The, the score was a great cover for things at that stage too. There's a famous um, case down in the Carrigtool area where there was an ambush and next thing it was um, Tyg Manley, who was a TD later, was one of the fellows anyway, and next thing they, they escaped anyway, and they cycled into a, a big crowd at a score. And when the police came, they didn't know who, who anyone was. They were inside in the middle of the score. And that's a historical fact during about, there was about 1921, we'll say. 
and uh, so so bowling is is kind of intertwined in various um, you know uh, things in the in, in the, the history of our emerging state. Like in the um, in the nineteen uh, thirties during the economic war. Oddly enough, when times were very hard, bowling shone out again. It was very popular in the thirties. Red Crowley in Bandon, for instance, he draw massive crowds. What a massive crowd will gather for that great score in the sky when we'll meet the boys.